So look, I'm a massive Zelda fan, right? Got my Breath of the Wild E3 2016 shirt. I actually got like eight of these. Uh, I know some people are wondering if I would give some of these away during E3. They've all been worn by me. Uh, if you're interested in buying a shirt that it'll be washed, but worn or being not buying, but being given a shirt, I guess let me know down in the comments uh, because, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind partying with a couple of them, uh, but I've literally worn all of them at one point or another. Uh, so none of them are brand new. But that's besides the point. Uh Skyward Sword HD. It's apparently important to Breath of the Wild. Or at least, that's what I'm getting from our latest rumor. Well, actually, yeah. Our latest rumor from Samus Hunter. So, I was talking to Samus Hunter. And this was uh, before the Pokemon stuff I posted uh, a few days ago. And I got some information here, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of going through my phone here. I don't have my notes right in front of me, uh, because I feel like this is important to talk about uh, if you are a Zelda fan, like I am, because when you are a Zelda fan, you really care a lot about um, uh, about particular details when it comes to story elements, gameplay, etc. Pretty much any information we could dig up uh, that is in regards to Zelda we care about. And we obviously care about Breath of the Wild 2, but before we're getting Breath of the Wild 2, we're getting Skyward Sword HD. And obviously Skyward Sword HD has an important place in Zelda history. It's the first game officially in the Zelda timeline. Don't believe me, go buy Hyrule Historia. Uh, but it's the first game in the Zelda timeline. It sets up the entire legend for Legend of Zelda, sort of retconning the original legend as it was told in Zelda 2. Uh, for those who don't know, back, back in the day, Zelda 2, the adventure link in the instruction manual explained the actual legend for Legend of Zelda. Uh, but that's obviously been retconned. Uh, it's Skyward Sword now explains uh, what sets everything up. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into story details because if I'm honest, not a lot of people played Skyward Sword HD. Yeah, sure, it still sold like three and a half, four million. But it, it in relative, um, the Skyward Sword HD, Skyward Sword sold three and a half, four million. Uh, but relative to other Zelda games, that's just okay, right? I don't want to ruin the story for the 16 million plus Breath of the Wild that are prospective customers potentially for Skyward Sword HD. So I don't want to ruin too much. But I do want to talk about uh, something Samus Hunter told me that's very interesting about why Nintendo is releasing Skyward Sword HD and why would this matter as we lead into Breath of the Wild 2 because why should Nintendo care about some of these aspects today if Breath of the Wild sort of reset the series if there wasn't going to be some importance to these in an upcoming game, aka Breath of the Wild 2. So, um... Samus Under told me, hi, Nate. I saw the latest Zelda video that you did, and they are talking about the live stream I did last Friday, uh, and said, too bad you had copyright issues with the live. Thanks, Viacom. Um, by the way, I won my copyright dispute. Yay, YouTube actually worked, surprisingly. Just took a day. Anyways, I hope it gets resolved. I'm glad to have heard other sources like Grub specify, Jeff Grubb, uh, that Breath of the Wild sequel is still planned for later this year in January. When I had imagined to get information on some of Nintendo's plans, the title listed as one of the last titles for 2021. So Samus Hunter has heard that, hey, um, this game's coming. It's the, one of the last games that's coming out this year. Uh, however, having not received any updates about it since I saw that date, I would say that it's very likely, thanks to the information of other people, that they will be able to release it in the time set, unless there are problems at the last moment, which I see difficult given Grubb's words. It's more like Grubb's meme that he put out there, plus we've heard rumors that localization is done from other sources. Uh, but I'm not convinced for a release between the last week of October and the first week of November. This is disputing a, an, another person that I have. Uh, but it says, because in that period, it's expected the second DLC pack for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, which will be used as an appetizer. Another detail, the launch window for Diamond and Pearl Pokemon Remix wasn't announced in February because they still don't have an exact release time for Zelda. So I'd say keep an eye on the launch date for the Pokemon title, which we will know before the E3 Direct, which again, that's in reference to, hey, look, um, the release date for Zelda uh, is affecting the release date for Pokemon. So when we do hear the release date for Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shiny Pearl, I guess I should say, correct myself there, uh, that we should have an idea that Zelda's probably three weeks one side or the other of that. All right. So then uh, I said, is there anything else you could tell me? And she said, well, if you have any specific questions or if you want to know some details regarding the marketing lines behind some games, I'll give an answer. I said, shoot, I'm just cutting up some fruit. Uh, before I head to the studio, which is just in my basement. <laughs> and it says, well, beyond game updates, I've already mentioned 
Uh, but I could give you some details about Zelda's anniversary plans. Now, here's where we get into the exciting stuff, and it deals with Skyward Sword. Uh, reading on the internet, some people were disappointed that Nintendo never mentioned the 35th anniversary of Zelda back on the actual 35th anniversary. Uh, but don't worry, it's actually normal because until March 31st, they were doing Mario's anniversary. And the plan for promotions will start primarily from June in the E3 period. Skyward Sword is a title that has been chosen because it is the beginning of the series. Okay, if that's fair, I guess whatever, you want to revisit the beginning. And... Nintendo wanted to introduce new fans. So this would be Breath of the Wild, right? Breath of the Wild is bigger than it's ever been, so new fans. Breath of the Wild fans. Uh, two, the origin of some characters, objects, and consequences of the story. For this reason, it was given priority over Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, although those are already remastered and will come out later. So here's the thing. Think about that. Characters objects and consequences of the story why would it matter to introduce new players of breath of the wild when breath of the wild seems so divergent from everything zelda's done before why would it matter well if you folks remember there's this cutscene in the original breath of the wild your master will come for you until then you shall rest safely here. Although the slumber of restoration will most certainly deprive him of his memories, please trust me when I say that I know he will arrive before you yet again. If I may be so bold, what is it that you are planning to do next, princess? Master Sword, I heard it speak to me. It seems that my role is unfinished. There is still something I must do. I sense there is great strength in your dedication. Great Deku Tree, I ask of you, when he returns, can you please relay this message? Tell him I... Now then. Words intended for him would sound much better in the tones of your voice, don't you think? Yes. Now, if you have not played Skyward Sword, you might not understand the reference in that cutscene, but the reference to the sword itself talking is actually a direct reference back to Skyward Sword. Now, I'm not going to go much further than that. You will find out by playing Skyward Sword HD. If you've already played Skyward Sword, you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, but my guess is that while nothing important necessarily happened in the events of Breath of the Wild that we're aware of from the sword talking... My guess is that changes in Breath of the Wild too, because they left you with not necessarily a cliffhanger at the end of Breath of the Wild, but they suggested there's more happening, more to do uh, as Zelda and, and Link walk off, you know, into the sunset. And in reality, is there is more to do. Uh, and I'm guessing that some of the characters might return. Um, I'm, I don't know that you know some of the uh, side characters or even some of the main characters that were only alive during that period of Skyward Sword are going to come back. But there's certain characters that could come back. Um, including a certain character that's probably tied to the sword, uh, maybe a certain character that's tied to the other side of things, maybe um, a certain overall evil that's bigger than Ganondorf. I think I'm giving away a little too much here. <laughs> but the point is that uh, I think a lot of this stuff is going to come full circle 
in Breath of the Wild 2. I think there is a lot of connections to be made, because why else would Nintendo feel like, look, we feel like it's important for the 16 plus million people to return to the beginning of the series so they can learn about the characters, the origins, the consequences of, the, of, of that story, and some of the items. Like, are, are, are there items coming back? Is the beetle coming back? I, it, this is one of those things where I feel like... There's a clear, specific reason that Eiji Inomu and Shigeru Miyamoto want you to revisit this game so you could end up going uh, into Breath of the Wild 2 with a fresh perspective in your mind of these events. Because I think these events are going to play an even bigger role in Breath of the Wild 2. Again, technically there's already a connection to Breath of the Wild. It's just that connection didn't really bear any fruit at the time. It could have been a setup for what we are going to experience here in Breath of the Wild 2. So... This is just obviously one fan's take on some rumors here, um, some reporting here that I got from Samus Hunter. Uh, again, don't know if this stuff is true that Nintendo really is emphasizing this, and that's why they're bringing Skyward Sword HD out when they are. However, if it is, that just makes even more sense uh, to lead that game up to Breath of the Wild coming later this year by keeping these story, these characters, and the items and the consequences of it all fresh in our minds as we head in to Breath of the freaking Wild 2, whatever they call this thing. Technically, it's not even called that. It's called Breath of the Wild sequel. The sequel to Breath of the Wild is now in development, right? We all remember that text. Uh, so that that's officially what it's called. But I'm excited about this. I hope you're excited about it too. I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully you join us this E3 as we hopefully figure all of this stuff out. Uh, I am so pumped. And also, by the way, if they hint during E3 that Skyward Sword HD has something to do with Breath of the Wild 2, Talk about a boost in sales for that game. Then I might start thinking Skyward Sword HD really will sell 10 million plus. Because if it's tied into the story, people are going to want to know who haven't experienced it. Alright folks, 